Let's dream together of the day when earth and heaven are one. A city built of love and light, the new Jerusalem, where our morning turns to dancing, every creature lifts its voice, crying, welcome, welcome to this place, you're invited to come and know God's grace, all are welcome. The love of God to share, cause all of us are welcome here. All are welcome in this place. Sing welcome, welcome to this place. You're invited to come and know God's grace. All are welcome, the love of God to share. Cause all of us are welcome here, all are welcome in this place. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, that was, you almost got it that time. First time out of the gate. Give yourselves a, yeah, I'm on now, there we go, yeah. All right, one more time. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. And welcome to United Church of Christ, Parker Hilltop. So glad you could be here. I'm Pastor Russ Kirby. If you are visiting today and have not uh, filled out one of these, please do. And we will be able to stay in touch with you and get you emails and keep you in contact. If you want to be anonymous, don't fill one of these out. Okay. <laughs> Just let you know. All right. It's kind of hard to be anonymous around here, and we're glad you're here. Uh, announcements. Uh, we have a care and nurture team. We'll be meeting Tuesday. You'll see these, in, by the way, in the back of your bulletin. Uh, we're meeting Tuesday, February the 27th at 9.30 a.m. in the church office. There's a, a, a nice table out there, I guess, for them to gather around. And all are welcome to join if you'd like to come. Also, join us next Sunday, March 3rd, for somebody called Pastor Russ. Oh, last day with us. Oh, that's my last day. Oh, yeah, next week's my last day. Uh, oh, yeah, we will celebrate our time with him following fellowship. That would be me. So, all right. And it's been an honor and a blessing. And we got two Sundays to go with this, this Sunday and next. So I'm excited and blessed to be here. Are there any other announcements? Oh, Eileen's like, oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, have we got a microphone for her somewhere? There we go. You can do it. I believe in you. Go long. <laughs> no running insurance. Well, I have two announcements. I'll try to make them quick. My voice sounds funny on this one. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it as long as you can hear me. Um, a lot's going on in our church, but a lot is going on across the street too at the schoolhouse. I know you know the history that we have with the schoolhouse that our church congregation used to meet in the schoolhouse. Um, all the way up through the 60s until the community built our church. Oh, oh, and thank you, tech team. Um, this is our congregation on the steps of the schoolhouse in 1962 or 64? 62. 62. Um, At least according to this. Once. And I can, I can kind of pick out a couple of familiar faces. Right be, in front of the window on the right is Paul Callahan. Right there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we can try to pick out other familiar faces too. Um, but I wanted you to know that not only do we have the fair with the schoolhouse, that many of our founding um, original parishioners were from Hilltop. And when we chose to change our name from Hilltop Community Church to UC UCCPH, we kept the Hilltop in our name of our church, even though the town of Hilltop is no longer here. Um, um, it was a little train stop uh, across from the church up here on Hilltop Road. Um, so it's north of here and it was a little east. Um, so what's going on at the schoolhouse? Um, well, 
There are some concerns about its safety in order to, um, and its soundness in order to host community events there still. Um, there's also concerns about how historically um, it has been preserved, like some of the changes that have been made to the schoolhouse in the last 30 years or 40 years have done, been done by people that didn't recognize the value of keeping the schoolhouse historically accurate. So they are pursuing grants. The first one is from the Douglas County Board of Historic Preservation. And to obtain the grant, they need to show partnerships within the community. And so I asked our church council if they would write a, a, a letter of support, which they did. And I'm very thrilled with that. And I wanted to open it up to the congregation. If any of you would like to donate um, any funds, because we also have to show matching funds for any grant that we apply for. Um, if you would like to chip in any amount, it doesn't have to be large. Um, I have an envelope and the schoolhouse has created a building fund that will only be used for construction of the schoolhouse. So I just wanted to, in case anyone is interested, I'm a, I am a volunteer at the schoolhouse and I know it would mean a lot um, to the people. And secondly, my, my second announcement, is that we are choosing to support the, the Denver Dumb Friends League with recyclable items such as towels, um, any kind of old shoe boxes or cardboard that you have at your house. Um, there's a list in the newsletter, and if you want more information about it, just let me know. But throughout the month of March, the kids in um, Kids Faith Formation will be collecting those items. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eileen. And, and those paper towel rolls are exactly what our dogs use for toys around our house. Just, just saying, rip them to shreds. Sandy. <laughs> it's all right. And the envelope. And the envelope, please. <laughs> I just wanted to announce that we are exploring the possibility of having a book club oh. and uh, it's uh, so far Scott and me and Gus and Cam and we're having a meeting tomorrow at one o'clock right out there in the vestibule and um, to talk about uh, possibly this book that we've been reading it's called um, the kingdom and the power and the glory and it's by a journalist about what has happened to the evangelical church or churches or movement or whatever so it's uh very well written i'm only in the beginning of it but it's very good and i think it would be very interesting so we'd love to have anyone join us we don't know yet when we'll be meeting but whatever we'll figure it out that's a fantastic book, by the way, and uh, there are plenty of interviews online of this gentleman, too. He's got some really great uh, insights, so yeah. Are there any other announcements? <laughs> Somebody can tell them how to do Zoom. They will use have Zoom members. You might have just gotten another member of your book club. Yay. All right. Anyone uh, else? Right over here, uh, Paul. Wow, why are they all behind me? <laughs> That's right. Okay, just real quick. Uh, deacons and fellowship uh, people. We need both uh, for uh, the month of March, uh, for uh, deacons for sure. I think we've got some fellowship uh, scheduled for maybe a week or two in March. But uh, please uh, go down, sign in. It's right there at the bottom of the stairs. So on your way to the lovely uh, fellowship <laughs> desserts and so forth that we have just uh, put your name on the on the board to be a deacon or a or a fellowship thank you and that is a, a vital and incredible ministry yeah come on over it's a vital incredible ministry uh, and it's a great opportunity for you to serve in the church without having to preach it's uh, speaking of urgency i uh 
just wanted to make a quick prayer for Joe and Jan Arachi as he struggles with his health. So on behalf of him, I'm singing for him today. All right. So yeah, he's, he's fallen ill and we will definitely cover him in joys and concerns too. So uh, thank you and thank you for filling in. Appreciate it, Ben. It's unusual to see you not on keys. So are there any other announcements? All right, for those of you who are wondering, a vestibule is an antechamber, hall, or lobby next to the outer door of a building. Just thought you'd let it know. Big words, yes. All right. Are there any, is there anything online, by the way? Nope, okay, all right. Well, let us take this moment and enter into a time of worship as we prepare our hearts. Thank you, Luann. Let us rise in body and spirit, if you're able to, and call, join in the call of worship found in your bulletin. This season of Lent, we come. As we are, where we are, authentically. We come to remember you. To listen, to reflect, wholeheartedly. We come to let go in our hearts. To let go of the things that don't matter. This season of Lent, we come. And remember that we are yours, God. Please remain standing and let us sing from the black hardcover hymnal number 66, O Day of Radiant Gladness. For the opening hymn, it's going to be in the same tune as the closing hymn, O Church of One Foundation. Christ 
Christ rose from death of birth. This day our God victorious, the Spirit sent from heaven. And thus this day most glorious, a triple light was given. This day God's people meeting the Holy Scripture here. Christ living presence greeting through bread and cup made near. We journey on believing, renewed with heavenly might. From grace for grace receiving on this blessed day of light. That light our hope sustaining upon the pilgrim way. At length our rest attaining our endless Sabbath day. We sing to you our praises, our hope, our joy, our song. The church is voice of praise to you, blessed three in one. My pleasure once again to uh, introduce the stewardship uh, moment for this week. Uh, we've gone through uh, three pieces of the pie here. We've had uh, berry pie, we've had cherry pie, we've had uh, some sort of orange concoction uh, <laughs> last week. And uh, this week we're going to be having some sort of lemon, lovely lemon pie. So uh, all matches the colors on here. So pledge forms are in the back. Don't forget about those. We'll hear more about that later. I do want to thank again the uh, people that have already come forward on the mission, uh, I mean on the uh, stewardship side for all of our ministry teams. Uh, there's a reason for doing this. I may have mentioned this, I don't know if I have. We, we are looking for people to hopefully participate in these teams. We wanted to bring more light to what they do so that everybody has a better idea of what exactly is going on kind of behind the scenes in the church. that that let us have a service every Sunday, all the different things that go on um, with uh, care and nurture and with uh, all the different areas that we that we work with in the church and, and the people that are involved with that that don't always get any kind of recognition for doing so. So um, that's the reason for this. And hopefully we'll get some people that will want to, to have a passion for these various things that would like to get involved. And a big one is missions. We're, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Artie Thompson is going to talk to us about, about the missions team. It's a very important part of our church and, and an area that we really like to expand. So hopefully we can get uh, some more people to join that group and uh, really do some great things in our community. So anyway, without further ado, Artie, thank you. The part of the graph that's yellow is for pie, and uh, the lemon pie has a very special memory for me. My dad loved lemon pie, and I would make lemon pie for him occasionally, but they didn't always turn out. <laughs> you know, they were just runny. They weren't very good. And then um, our good friends, Ron and Terry, we would go to Baker Square in Mankato, and they had uh, lemon supreme pie and meringue pie. And so this morning, when you go downstairs, those are the pies that I'm, we are serving today. Uh, I would like to give a little history of the mission board as I know it since moving to Parker. Uh, one of the first things that I'm going to read to you is the mission statement that we put together a few years ago. And as you hear this, kind of put yourself in the 
thought process of things that maybe you have already participated in, um, things that you might want to participate in. Here it is. God calls us through a mission to open our hearts, minds, souls, and needs of others. We pray for guidance as we consider opportunities to share our gifts of time, talent, materially and financially as ideas are presented to us. We find ways to share locally, nationally, and internationally. We support the UCC wider mission through the Five for Five national offerings. We are blessed and will encourage others to give and to be free to give to others without conditions in non-judgmental ways. We will share the missions with the congregation. So as I'm thinking about some of the things that I experienced here at the church over the years, I'm remembering just some really wonderful things, and one of them was bicycles for Buckley. We got bicycles around Christmas time so that all kids that needed a bicycle out at Buckley, they would get a bicycle, and we would also take uh, Christmas gifts to the family. Another part of that was we were able to help some of the spouses of the people in the military with uh, some scholarship to go to uh, training, like becoming a good cook or just some, some kind of a training that they needed for themselves. And I thought that was really a neat mission. How many of you remember uh, many different sizes of Easter baskets being brought to the church? And we brought candy and we brought stuffed animals and we brought, you know, many just different things and put them in these baskets. And then how do you wrap them with this cellophane paper tape kind of a thing? And I think just a few years ago, Jean said something to me, well, let's just do little bags and put the stuff in the bag instead of these baskets. So that has kind of continued, but not recently. Um, we also have given school supplies to many different places uh, on bases and to schools and to places like Help and Hope. Uh, for many years, the group went down to La Puente to dig uh, up potatoes to after the migrant people have gone through and uh, we can bring home some potatoes and make sure those potatoes got to people that needed them. Also at Lopente, uh, we were taking down toiletries and also egg cartons, which we're still continuing today. Uh, we started sponsoring Helen in Common Hope down in Guatemala. Uh, and she was uh, sponsored for many, many years, and she graduated this last November. We also had an Indy 500 Sunday, where we had a, a congregant come through the church in his red undies, and we brought socks and t-shirts and things like that. Uh, recently, we uh, had a Super Bowl Sunday, uh, what did you call it, a lottery? I guess you call it a lottery. What do you call, what, what football, do you call it? Football lottery. And then that same Sunday, we had brought, all, during the month, we brought all the soup for Super Bowl Sunday. So that was kind of an ongoing thing that we did. We gave uh, Thanksgiving baskets and ideas to the Parker Task Force. Uh, we've had youth and people at church uh, do Christmas gifts for Help and Hope. Uh, we've had people with trivent uh, possibilities donate monies to support some of these issues. We also have, um, well, we have the 545, which I mentioned earlier. And then we had a really neat idea that came up with uh, committed funds from the budget for people who have a passion for ministry and they were able to um, ask for monies to help support their missions. Some of those recent ones were helping with the uh, fire in Boulder, uh, helping with the Afghan refugees, helping in Ukraine, helping with the Spice Project, and, and many, many others. And I would also like to share with you 
our five for five piece. The five R one uh, UCC. This is the national part of our mission board. Uh, UCC basic support. Uh, next month, we will be doing the one great hour of sharing. During Pentecost, we will have strength in the church. First Sunday of October, neighbors in need. And the fifth Sunday before Christmas would be the Christmas fund. So I thank everybody that's participated in these missions. And because there's so many missions and it changes all the time, you have an opportunity to explore them. Thank you. All right. Well, I invite our uh, next generation to come on up. That's you, huh? Woohoo! All right, I invite anybody who feels like a next generation. All right, there we go. See, is that better? Is that better? All right. Woohoo! All right, so I tried to find a picture of this, and I know there's a picture floating around there somewhere, but I couldn't, and so otherwise I would have slapped it up there and let you guys see it. But I had this um, clubhouse when I was growing up, and it was um, it was it was a kind of a little. Uh, I had a little building that my dad and I built together. And, and the more I've learned about construction since, I'm amazed how long it stayed up. <laughs> but, but anyway, it, it had this, it was, it was kind of shaped, you know, like a building, right? But instead of having a roof like this, it had a single slant like this, okay? And then there was a fence here, so slant and the fence. And then right over here was a big mimosa tree. And I know that it's not the drink, it's a mimosa is a tree it, it's it's nasty during the spring it, it's got these pink buds that that fly all over the place and they land and then it rains and you got pink goo everywhere it's it's really weird but anyway uh so we had we this was this was a, the my little clubhouse i was probably i don't know seven eight nine somewhere in there when we had it and um and and one time i i, I did all sorts of things i was a very creative child uh and i grabbed some rope and I tied it to a branch. I was on top of the of the clubhouse. And I tied a branch, uh, tied this rope to a branch, and then I pretended like I was rappelling. You know what I'm talking about when you're going inside, down the side of a building? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, no, okay. And and that was that was fun until the knot gave out. And so I'm on this slant, right? You got you got the tree, you got the rope. This is Russ, little Russ. Big Russ would have just gone through the through the uh, roof at that roof, I know. But anyway, so I'm repelling and and, it, and I'm falling. And there's this chain link fence. Have you ever seen the top of a chain link fence? You know those little pointy things, right? Lots of pointy things. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. You know when something like that happens, sometimes time slows down. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like you know, when you go into that <gasps> mode, you know time slows down. And I was in that <gasps> mode as I'm going over the edge of this building and i'm seeing this fence come at me and i felt for a moment not in a good way like one of those t uh, high jumpers you know where they're going over the you know how they do that like you know get over without without hitting the bar right well i fortunately did not hit the bar i don't think i probably looked that good but but yeah i i i thought i did i thought you know and i landed uh on the grass in the neighbor's yard and fortunately it was soft but my pride was hurt and my shoulder was hurting and and i was mad at the tree for letting go of the rope and and that yeah that's that's um that's my clubhouse story among others but um sometimes we put our faith in things that aren't as strong as we think they they are you know what i'm saying um we we put our faith into a rope or a knot or a tree and um and we can get hurt that way and I'm, I'm sure you guys have had that happen you've put your faith in somebody or something and depended upon that um and we have you know we have tons of of sayings that kind of go along with the one that comes to mind oddly enough is don't count your chickens before they hatch 
where, you, you know, you, you put all your eggs in one basket, that's another one. Uh, this idea of having only one thing and depending on that one thing and expecting that one thing to come, uh, come out and, and support you or whatever. Um, and it doesn't. And, um, and it really sucks. It really hurts when uh, a friend or um, a parent or um, a rope in a tree or something doesn't, doesn't support you like you thought it would. And, um, and so the lesson that comes out of that a lot of times is, one, have more, more eggs and chickens so that you, just in case some don't hatch, you're okay, right? Or, or not putting everything in one basket, but having multiple baskets. Um, or um, having multiple friends. Um, and, and you know, the reality is nothing's perfect. Nothing is completely solid. Uh, I do believe that God is perfect and God is completely solid. But when it comes to life in general, um, uh, you know, people make mistakes. People goof up. People um, forget. People um, don't do what they're supposed to do. Life uh, doesn't work out and ropes sometimes come loose off of trees. And, And that's one of the lessons that we learn. So a foundation that we're trying to build as people to to grow on, um, unlike the cinder block foundation of that clubhouse, but something stronger is often spread out over multiple people, multiple things. It's kind of like a net. Um, If you fell off of uh, your clubhouse and all you had to catch you was a rope, you might miss it, it might break, right? But if you have a net, if any of the parts of the net may break, the rest of it kind of holds steady, right? So building a foundation in the world that we live in, in the life that we live, uh, means including God. It means including more than just one person. It means um, depending on multiple things so that we can stay safe and stay up. And we're still going to get hurt. But um, that's kind of what I want you to take away is this idea that we don't put all our eggs in one basket. We don't depend all on one thing, um, that we hold on to God, that we hold on to others, we forgive those that break, those ropes that break, and we believe and trust in those who do their best to love us and care for us, as we do our best to love and care for them. Cool? All right. We are wonderful. We are are kind. We are are brave. We are are loved. loved. Hey, God. All right. Thank you guys so much. I ask you to um, keep these folks in prayers as I shared these concerns this morning. Brooke Albright shared that her best friend, Eleanor's mom, Martha, who has been in our prayers for the last couple of weeks, passed away on Friday. Please keep Eleanor, her family, as well as Brooke in your prayers during this difficult time. Heidi Bailey asked for prayers for her cousin Debbie, who is undergoing cancer treatment. Debbie has surgery for pancreatic cancer a few years ago, but has now metastatic cancer that is growing in her liver. They have two children close in age to Spencer and Anne-Marie. Continued prayers for the Eliasson family. Jack Norton, Martha Sprague's grandson Rory, as well as all of our military and their families. Shirley Wick, the Kleiber and Manchester families, friends of Desiree and Jeff Galloway, Ellie Yoakum's daughter's friend, Amy, Ann Pigeon's friend, Beth, Don and Shirley Wick's nieces, Jane and Judy, the Bailey family, and Pastor Russ's mom, Lolo.
that would like to share this morning. My notes, my notes here. Uh, I spoke with uh, Jack Norton's son, Dave, yesterday and have permission to give you this update. Jack is in room 5410 at Sky Ridge. The family has moved his stuff out of independent living at Somer Glen, where he has been. They're hoping he may be able to get back there in other living situation. Jack is not doing well. For those of you that don't know, he fell a number of weeks ago, broke a couple of vertebrae and bumped his head very hard. He is often agitated, alternatively coherent and incoherent. Dave said the family is very pleased with the nursing care he is receiving there. Dave also said, yes, he could receive visitors as long as the visitors are prepared for what they might encounter with Jack. So continuing prayers for Jack Norton and his family, for the boys and their families. Good morning, all. I think most of you know that uh, Holly's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And uh, the neurologist has given her some medicine. Won't reverse it, but it tends to slow it down a little. And it works differently for different people. Um, it was her decline started real fast here. And uh, she's been on this medicine. And I think it's starting to slow it down a little bit, her decline. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I got sucked into buying something online while I was playing the game. <laughs> and uh, some kind of magical gummies that are supposed to help with memory. And I said, I got nothing to lose. And they're also helping, I think, slow it down, believe it or not. So just please keep it in your, in your prayers that we can keep this, this decline slow so I can have a lot more years of enjoyment. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Are there any Zoomers? No. Well, I'll, I'll quickly point out and uh, thank everyone for all the cards and letters, phone calls, visits. Uh, for Shirley, Shirley has uh, turned a little bit of a corner this week. Things are looking up and looking a little bit better. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. And, and I'm here. And I am blessed uh, to have you in my church family and our circle. And Shirley is as well. So thanks for keeping her in mind. We're moving on to our prayer song in the red hymnal, O oh Lord, Hear My Prayer, number 484. Hear our prayers in this time, in this day. Hear the joys that we bring to you, the goodness of life that makes our spirits dance. And hear, O oh God, our concerns for health, for memory, for cancer, for deployments for all the stuff of life that 
make us worry and give us pause. For our military here and abroad, as they serve, Christ have mercy. For those who are hungry, homeless, who have mental issues and physical issues and relationship issues. For those who are in prison, for those who are wanting freedom, whatever that may look like. Oh God, hear our prayers. And God, we lift up people of this world, those enduring war and famine and those who are fleeing for their lives to hopefully a safer place. We lift up our leaders in this world. May they have mercy and be kind and loving to the people who may lead. And for all the prayers of this world, of our hearts, of each of us, oh God, oh God, hear our prayers. we join in the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our wrongs as we forgive those who have wronged us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh Lord. A little contents for today's reading. Jesus had just talked with a huge crowd of people and he and some of his companions walked up a large hill to get some rest. And these are the words that, part of the words, he said a whole lot more to his companions. These are part of the words that he said to his companions. This scripture reading comes from Matthew 7 verse 21 through 29 from the Message Bible. This is Jesus talking. Knowing the correct password, saying master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. I can see it now. At the final judgment, thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preached the message. We bashed the demons. Our super spiritual project had everyone talking. And do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You're out of here. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter 
who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved the house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on a sandy beach. When a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. When Jesus concluded his address, the crowd burst into applause. They had never heard teaching like this. It was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. Quite a contrast to their religion teachers. This was the best teaching they had ever heard. So when you see the words flying foundation, I imagine you're having some things going through your head. What does that look like? My, uh, my husband and I have been enjoying uh, TV series. Some of you may have also been watching it as well. It's, um, it's, called, it's called Masters of the Air. Have you heard of that? Yeah, and there's a book out by Donald Miller. Um, it's kind of like just one of those random connections. Uh, a friend of mine is friends with Donald Miller, and, and, uh, and Donald Miller uses his retreat center uh, to write books. So who knows, maybe this was written there. I don't know. But um, it's based in World War II, and it is uh, the Army's 8th, I've got notes here so I get this all right, uh, the Army's 8th Air Force 100th Bomb Group, also known as the Bloody 100th. And you can imagine why. They flew B-17s, which are these down here, and this is one, I guess, getting bloody. I don't know. Uh, that's the show. And it's on Apple, Apple TV Plus, if you have that. Highly recommend. Um, and they're on a huge mission in this uh, episode three. They go in deep into Germany to take out an aircraft manufacturing uh, plant. And the 100th was to fly to Regensburg, Germany, and then on to Africa. But they encountered heavy anti-aircraft flak. That's what this is right here. And this is, this is actually from World War II, these pictures that I pulled up here. Uh, and these things are blowing up around there. Shrapnel is going into the planes. And they lost a lot of men, and they lost a lot of planes in this attempt to get to this factory. One B-17 was so badly damaged and leaking fuel, and this, by the way, is a real honest-to-goodness B-17, and look at this. You can see the framework inside where the flak had blown through the aircraft. They flew like this. And was this one particular aircraft was beat up like this, and the, the pilot, Bucky, was really concerned that they wouldn't make it across the Mediterranean to get into Africa. He did the math and realized it wouldn't work. And he orders the crew to throw everything out that's not nailed down, including the ball turret right here on the belly, about 850 pounds, ammunition, cases, Whatever they could throw out, they would throw out. And he also ordered that the super secret Norden bomb site that they used to bomb uh, any of their missions um, would be thrown out. And the, and the bombardier was really freaked out about this because it's super secret. We don't want this getting into German hands. And Bucky said, don't worry about it. We're over the Mediterranean. It's going to go into the ocean. Just throw it out. And so everything went out through the bomb bay doors, through the windows, the turret, the Norton bomb site, all of it, all of it, just to try to make it to shore. Our sermons this month, we have been engaging in the death of the church, or at least the change of the church. We've been looking at it through Jesus' teachings on the Sermon on the Mount, 
um, and in, in the book of Matthew. We've talked about the concerns, the uh, condition of our aircraft, if you will, with shrinking membership, shrinking finances, shrinking reputation and influence in society, and quickly becoming less influential in U.S. American culture. And then we also saw some advantages with this. We looked at the possibility that perhaps, because we're no longer that army of God marching that everybody has to pay attention to, right? Suddenly, that makes us more sensitive to those around us so that we can love them a little bit better. But in order to do this, we also have to be familiar with who we are as people and what our call is as God's people and in the ministry that we're called to do, that we may love these people in our own way. So today's scripture has a lot to do with this next part, believe it or not. Let it go. Remember this? Elsa singing? This is what we have to do. We have to let go of things that don't matter anymore, like our Norden bomb site, like our ammunition, things that worked well and early on the mission that don't, and don't help us any now, or maybe just things that we've held on to that really aren't foundational to what our call in ministry is to be now. We've got to let these things go. In order to know that, what to let, excuse me, in order to know what to let go, we have to know who we are, right? We have to know what God's call for us is. We need to know what's important in the midst of this. So today's scripture is about foundations. <laughs> when when uh, I gave this picture to Peggy to put on the bulletin, she's like, what, what is this? What, what is this? What? Did you mean to give me this picture? Is this the wrong picture? No, that's right. It's the right picture. This is a foundation. Uh, Gene, you might correct me. This is a pier and beam, correct? Or some form of it, or you don't know? That's not your part of engineering, is it? All right, well, this, as my understanding, is a pier and beam. This is what we had, similar to what we had under the house that I grew up in. So you have this goes down to bedrock, this concrete, and then you put, you put beams over that, and then the floor is built on top of that, and the house goes. Um, and it's, it's important, according to our scripture, to, to, to root that foundation in something solid. And, of course, Jesus is using his teachings as that foundation. He's saying, the teachings that I give you, these are the foundation in which you root your faith, which is a far cry from a lot of Christian teachings these days, if you haven't noticed, that mention a scripture and then utilize it to support the preachers or a political or a, a social agenda of any form, way, shape, or other, it is, it, is, it is a twisting of this. It is a foundation built on sand, not on the rock foundation of Christ's teachings. So the teachings of Christ are kind of like the B-17 in the story that we're talking about. And we, the church, are along for the ride, trying to complete the mission. And we take a lot of junk along that we think is needed. We take a lot of stuff that is needed for the mission, or at least part of the mission. And now it's time to jettison it. Because we are battered and beaten as a church through history. And we've got to make it to the shore to complete our mission. And so it's time to let go of those things some of which we hold very dear, but that are not foundational to what we're called to do. There are people and churches who hold on to things and try to keep this plane flying with too much weight and too much junk, and guess what's going to happen to that plane if they don't throw it out the window? What? It crashes. And this is my challenge to you as United Church of Christ, Parker Hilltop, but also to the greater church. What are the things that we hold so dearly? Those traditions, those things we do, those things we say, the way we say them, the words we use. Oh my gosh. 
fancy words that the rest of the world doesn't know, right? How do we take who we are and who God is and the foundation of God and continue and complete our mission? What do we need to let go so that our battered and bruised plane can make it to the shore? It's not easy. Some of the things thrown out of those B-17s when they met those those situations were good luck charms. Ammunition that protected them from, from German fighters. Guns that protected them from German fighters. Bombs that they hadn't dropped. Any number of these things sound so precious and so dear, but there's nothing more precious and more dear than the plane that you're riding in, is there? And this is our foundation, our flying foundation. All else, out the window if we have to. All else, let it go so that we can continue to complete the mission that Christ has called us to do in the way that Christ has called us to complete that mission. Amen? Our middle hymn is in the black hymnal, number 433. In the bulb, there is a flower. An invitation to give. As we prepare to pass the offering plates, both real and virtual, a small part of today's sermon is the parable of the builders. And I can't help but wonder if this passage isn't the inspiration behind the fairy tale we know as the three little pigs. According to Wikipedia, its origin is unknown, but its earliest published version of this tale was back in England in 1853, and it features pixies and a fox. We're four Sundays into our stewardship drive, and I find myself wondering which builder, which little pig we are. For this analogy, the house we are building is made up of the UCC ministries we choose to support. The building materials are, of course, our contributions of time, talent, and treasure. But the foundation, the all-important foundation, is the expectation 
that those contributions will be sufficient to weather the realities of the world in which we live, the wolf at our door. So far, I have received about 20 pledges of financial support, more today perhaps. That's about half of what we've gotten in the past. It is about a third of what we had hoped for. Those 20 pledges document only a slight increase in our anticipated revenue. It is, however, those pledges that constitute this church's foundation. Is it sand or is it rock? I leave it up to you to decide just where our house sits and what it's made of in this all too real fairy tale of UCCPH versus the future. Rise for the doxology, number 777 in the black hymnal. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit the Comforter one God triune whom we adore. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we give these gifts, these blessings to you, that they may be something that strengthens the foundation that we have as people of God. May they go to your glory May they go to your mission. May they go to the work that you need us to do in the world. In Christ's name, all people said, amen. amen. Remain standing for number 386 in the black hymnal, the church is one foundation, first and last verses only. <clears throat> The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are Christ's new creation by water and the word. From him Christ came and sought us in love to set us free. 
With precious blood Christ bought us for all eternity. Yet we on earth have union with God the Three in One. And mystics we communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy was and holy, God gives us grace that we, like them the meek and lowly, may live eternally. As I was putting together today's sermon, uh, and I was thinking about throwing things out of the bomber or the plane are throwing things out of our, our for our mission to, to continue. Um, I realize also that that the, the power of doing so makes the plane lighter right more nimble allows it to maneuver quickly. And and then I since we're on fairy tales I've heard a lot of that today. Um, Jack be nimble Jack be quick. That is what we're called to do That is what we're called to be. To let go of the stuff that holds us down, that loads us down, that slows us down. That we may go forth and be nimble and quick. That we may jump over the candlestick or whatever our mission is. Go and do likewise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here's all these items. <laughs> 